So Euphoria episode four had a lot going on in it. And in this video, rather than just breaking down one character, we're gonna be looking at probably about three or four different characters and explain what's going on in their story arcs and see what we can learn from it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, typically what I do is I pull different topics from the YouTube community, but I like to pull topics from movies, TV shows, pop culture in general, try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and make sure you check out my Euphoria playlist. I've been covering all the episodes. But yeah, before we get started, in case you did not know, I have my brand new book, Rewire Your Anxiety, out now, and a bunch of people are giving me feedback on it, and it makes me feel oh so good. But anyways, it's available in both ebook and audiobook format, so if you want to check that out, it's down in the description, down in the pinned comment below. All right? So yeah, Euphoria episode four, there's a lot going on, um, and obviously each episode kind of like really centers around one character, but we kind of see what's going on with other characters. So in this episode, it really focused on Jules, and it kind of gave um, a little bit of her backstory and everything like that. I'm not gonna be diving too much into her going into a psychiatric hospital as a child, but if that's something that you want me to kind of do a whole video on, um, and children going to psychiatric hospitals, um, when it comes to you know self-harm or even what might have been, you know, her being put in there for, you know, gender dysphoria or whatever it is. Like, if you want me to make a video on that, let me know down in the comments below, all right? But I want to be talking about a few different characters. So let's talk about Rue, all right, played by Zendaya, which is really interesting because I just took my son to go see uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. I, I act like I took my son, like, I didn't freaking love it. Love that movie. It was so interesting just seeing, like, Zendaya as... Mary Jane Watson and then Zendaya as Rue, you know what I mean? But anyways, I've done a lot of video breakdowns on Rue because she struggles with addiction. Those of you who don't know me, I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic with over seven years clean and sober. But yeah, this episode, it didn't focus too much on Rue, all right? Like there was like the quick little scene where she met with uh, Ali after she called him at the end of the last episode. And like, I'm telling you guys right now, I'm telling you guys right now, like their relationship, this kind of sponsor sponsee relationship is going to be legit, all right? Like I love Ali because he's the type of sponsor who I would want. One who is just no nonsense, get straight to the point, like don't be like beating around the bush, let's talk about the problem, focus on the solutions, you know what I mean? So make sure you're paying attention to that. But anyways, I wanna talk about Rue and her relationship with her little sister, Gia, because in this episode, obviously, like, Rue, um, you know, took Gia to the carnival, and which is, which is good. So, for Rue, this is good, because it means her mother is trusting her more. Like, when I first got clean and sober, like, I wasn't trusted for a very long time. Like, even after I had almost a year and a half clean, a year and a half clean, my son's mother was still reluctant to let me watch him by myself, all right? So seeing the trust that's being rebuilt with um, Rue and her mom letting her, you know, take care of her little sister, like, that's cool. So make sure you pay attention to that because that's something that helps encourage people's recovery. But what we see later is that, you know, Gia smokes pot with these dudes, right? And there's a few ways to look at this, all right? A few different ways. Like, one of them is this is a kid just trying out some pot. That's cool. Pot, I have nothing against it. It's legal here in Nevada. I help vote for it. Whatever. Do your thing, boo. But something to pay attention to, and this is something that we need to pay attention to in our real lives as well, is modeling behaviors, right? But also, Gia went through like a traumatic experience seeing her sister overdosed, all right? Like that will mess a child up. Like um, those of you who don't know, I worked in addiction treatment for a little over three years as well. And there are many people who came in there where like their children, right? Or their family, um, their friends found them overdose and had to call the you know paramedics or whatever. And it can be traumatizing. And this is how addiction kind of has this ripple effect, right? Because we affect other people, then they try to self-medicate. So like when I saw that Gia was like, you know, uh, messing around with weed, like it has me concerned because she might start abusing substances as a way to handle her own problems as well. So in Rue's case, like this is a tricky situation and something, again, I could do a whole nother video on and I might if this kind of progresses into something else. But anyways, like 
Rue, this gives her even more motivation to stay sober and stay on the right track because her little sister might be modeling her behavior or whenever Rue puts her through a tra traumatic experience, then Gia might want to turn to substances and that can turn out bad. And then this poor mother is gonna have two, not one, but two children who are abusing substances. So next, let's talk about Kat. So in the last episode, it focused mainly around Kat. And what we know about Kat is that she, you know, obviously struggles with some insecurities and everything like that. So in this episode, you know, she goes to the carnival and there's that boy that she was kind of flirting with in class. And then, you know, they were hanging out at the carnival and, you know, she clearly has a, a, a thing for him, right? But anyways, you know, she says, hey, I'm gonna go get us some, you know, drinks or whatever. And then she comes back and she sees him talking to another girl. So I've done videos in the past about like YouTubers, um, you know, who have been cheated on and everything like that. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like what you just saw with Kat, and obviously Kat is not dating this guy, but a lot of people do things, right? Especially in relationships that are based on insecurities, okay? Like something I, I try to teach everybody is, if you've been cheated on, it is not because of you, it is because of them and their own insecurities. And you see how trivial this can be. And especially in high school, like it can be really trivial, but this is something that I see grown adults do. Hell, this is something that I struggled with way into my 20s and my insecurities, right? So Kat sees him talking to this girl, and then when we hear the conversation, this girl worked with his sister and she has a boyfriend and that's why they were talking. But Kat just seeing that, she got jealous and she went and hooked up with that other guy, all right? And like, as I'm watching this, I'm like, oh no, 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 girl, no, girl. Like go like walk up, you know, whatever it is, right? Because we're never going to have healthy relationships if we constantly think that, you know, the guy we're seeing or the girl we're seeing, whoever it is, might be flirting or talking with other people. Like one of the things I love about my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, is like she's one of the first women I've dated where like jealousy isn't this like huge thing, right? But I've done things to earn her trust. And one of them is being clean and sober, not being a scumbag anymore. You know what I'm saying? But I want you all to like really look at yourself and look like, do you do this? Do you do this thing? Because sometimes it's not even, you know, seeing that person talking to another person. Sometimes it's just, oh, this person isn't giving me the love or affection or attention that I feel that I deserve, that I feel that I need, and then you run off and you start talking to somebody else to get that attention that you need. So I think as we you know, see the season go on, we're gonna see more of what Kat does based on her insecurities. So if you're somebody who struggles with insecurities, I recommend that you pay attention to Kat because we're going to see how it causes problems in her life. Next, let's talk about Cassie, played by Sydney Sweeney. So this episode, she ends up going to the carnival with McKay, the dude she's seeing. And in the last episode, you know, like she went, you know, to his frat party and everything like that. And yeah, they like said they loved each other, all right? And like teenage love, like, <laughs> all right, that's just, that's another whole nother video, all right? But anyways, um, and I, I'm just now thinking of this, but she she gets upset with McKay because he he tells, you know, his boy that, like, they're just chilling, right? He doesn't say, like, they're dating, this is my girlfriend, or anything like that. And in McKay's mind, like, he's doing the right thing because he's protecting her, right? He's protecting her because... His friends, they think, you know, not great things about her because of her past. There was a video that we saw in the very first episode and everything like that. But what I was just thinking about too is because like, I don't recommend that you hang out with people or date people who are, won't like tell their friends that you guys are dating. Like, that's not cool. Like that is gonna turn into a mess. But McKay had no problem bringing her to the frat party. So it seems like he just, you know, he has some like hesitancy for people who know about her past, all right? And that's something that we really need to think about. Like, this is one of the reasons why it's so important to take things slow, right? Like so many people wanna to toss out the I love yous and you know, some people like, you know, these are high school students that we're watching, but some people, you know, they're moving in together or some people are running off and getting married. Like, like it's not just about like taking your time for the sake of taking your time. Like one of the reasons you take time with relationships before they get super duper serious, right? You don't let your emotional brain run things and you use some of your logical brain is because you haven't been through enough situations together to know if this is 
the relationship, right? Or if everything is honky-dory. Like, we all focus on the honeymoon phase, but, like, we need to, like, realize, like, it's important to know how things are going to go when things aren't great. Like, how do you handle fights? How do you handle arguments? How do you guys handle each other's friends? How do you handle each other's family members? And all these other things, all right? So this is one of the reasons why it might be good, like, even if you feel, right, even if you feel like you love that person, like, tone it down just a little bit, wait a little bit longer until you're in more situations to say, okay, is this thing going to work? And obviously, like, what we're seeing, like, this is a theme throughout the show, throughout this episode, is that you see people making bad decisions based on their emotions. This is one of the reasons why I advocate that we need to focus on our mental health. Our emotions drive us to do things that we end up regretting, right? So Cassie in this situation getting upset, she ends up getting high, um, she takes some molly, she goes on the carousel, and we all know what happened there, right? And that's gonna be interesting too because I can see Cassie trying to change who she is, get into this serious relationship with McKay, but she might be struggling from, you know, that phase she was in, you know, hooking up and everything like that. And when she was on the carousel and you saw everybody see this, right, that might hurt her confidence and wondering if she can change. And here's the advice I have for all of you. Like, when we're trying to become that person we want to become, there's going to be setbacks. We're gonna screw up, we're gonna have these roadblocks, we're gonna have these speed bumps, whatever it is, right? But do not let that stop you from moving forward, okay? We're all gonna make mistakes. We are all flawed human beings, okay? The most we can do is learn from them and try to grow moving forward, all right? So, the last thing we'll talk about is jewels, okay? So, this episode had a lot to do with jewels, but I just wanna kinda focus on you know, the ending where she finally found out that Tyler is actually Nate, all right? And this, this was weird. Like, just, like, purely opinion, not like, uh, you know, what can we learn from this thing? Like, I don't know. It was, it was just weird. Like, that, that whole scene was weird. It feels like, it felt like it escalated very quickly and everything like that. And, you know, obviously, like, Nate has a thing for Jules, but, you know, he starts threatening her. But, like, even though that's weird, like, this is something I could see really happening, okay? Like, Nate is the type of person who we've seen, you know, get physical with people, but, like, he is also somebody who will use emotional abuse, emotional manipulation, right? And that's what he was doing to Jules in that situation. So we see this a lot just in shows, you know, with blackmail and, you know, and things like that. But Nate is somebody who does not have his own stuff in check. Like we saw that in episode, what was it, episode two, where like this dude has some issues and he has daddy issues. He has all sorts of issues. So if, if you start seeing signs like this in a dude, might not be a good idea to date them. And it's not just dudes either, because I had my share of dating women who are not all there, right? So, like, this is something we all need to watch out for. Here's something that I think is really good about this show, though, okay? Like, it's, it's good, but, like, in the show we're seeing, like, it's obviously bad, where they talk about sending these lewd photos to one another. Because I think I mentioned it in my first review of this show maybe um like a lot of people do not real realize this like even like it, like a lot of people said they're minors watching this show right like i hope you guys are learning like this isn't fantasy like you can get in trouble you can go on an offender list okay for sending photos and for distributing photos okay like i hope everybody realizes this like listen listen if you're of age and you want to send nudes, do your thing, okay? But I really hope teenagers watching this show are understanding that there can be consequences for this. I mentioned in the first um, review of this show that I did that I know of somebody, right, who was 18 and shared a photo of a 17-year-old and he ended up getting in a lot of trouble legally for that. All right? So make sure that, like, you are learning from this. Like, this is very, very real. And obviously, the laws are different in, di uh, in different states and everything like that. But, like, it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay? 
But anyways, again, let me know down in the comments below if there are certain topics maybe that I brought up in this that you want me to dive deeper into. This is the first time where the video is a little bit longer, but I focused on a few different characters rather than just one. So help me help you. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Let me know if you want me to break down um, more topics, whatever it is. Just help guide me as I review this beautiful show, Euphoria, all right? And don't forget, check out the description and the pinned comment down below because my brand new book, Rewire Your Anxiety, is out now in ebook and audiobook format, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, support what I'm doing here, you can also get access to my books for free. You can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.